for this Halloween, I'm fusing the creative, blocky world of Minecraft with the spooky glow of the colorful RGB LEDs in a fun and simple Halloween project. A color adjustable Minecraft lantern is a project that recreates the iconic lantern from the video game Minecraft. It allows the user to change the light's color to any hue rather than being limited to the standard yellow or orange glow. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay specializes in manufacturing of very high quality, low volume colored PCBs at a very budgetary price. In addition to standard PCBs, you can also order advanced PCBs, aluminum PCBs, rigid flex PCBs. They also provide PCB assembly and other related services which can meet your need to the greatest extent. For this project we need 1 Arduino Nano, 2 Neopixel rings, 400 kilo ohm potentiometers, 1000 microfarad capacitor, 100 ohm resistor, 1 SPST switch, 1 18650 battery and a holder, 1 TP4056 battery charging module, a DC to DC buck converter, jumper wires and breadboard and a 3D printer to print the enclosure. All these components are available through the links in the description below. The setup consists of three simple circuits. First, the power circuit, a battery that charges and runs the Arduino Nano. Second, the control circuit, a potentiometer feeding signals to the Arduino. And third, the light circuit, the NeoPixel which lights up based on the instructions received from the Arduino. The Arduino reads the potentiometer via its analog pins, generating values from 0 to 1023. The range is then mapped to 0 to 255 to comply with the Arduino library. The converted signal is then sent sequentially to the LEDs, lighting them up one by one from the first to the last. Two key components are required for signal integrity, a 1000 microfarad capacitor close to the load to stabilize the voltage and a 100 ohm resistor on the data line to protect it against current surges and dampen signal noise. The code begins by including the Adafruit NeoPixel library and by defining the necessary pins and global variables. In the setup section, we initialize the NeoPixel library and immediately run a rainbow cycle across the entire LED ring to confirm it's working. The loop section continuously reads the potentiometer value, mapping it from a 0 to 1023 range to 0 to 255. You'll notice I commented out the brightness control section. This is because during my testing, I found that the NeoPixel library's brightness setting proportionally scales all the RGB values, which significantly alters the LED's perceived color and intensity. Finally, the code uses the mapped potentiometer values to set the pixel's color and updates the LED display. This creates a direct, real-time control between the potentiometer and the LED's output. Before putting everything into the enclosure, I hooked them up on a breadboard to test the code. When I powered it on, you can see that the NeoPixel ring plays a little rainbow animation and then they are ready to go. Now, when I turn these knobs, the color changes smoothly as the Arduino reads the potentiometer values and updates the LEDs in real time. I designed a custom 6-part enclosure in Microsoft 3D Builder for this project. You can download the STL files from my GitHub repository and have them professionally printed from PCBWay. The assembly includes a base for the main component like the battery, Arduino and the battery charger, a TP4056 topper to secure the charging module, four stands to mount the switch and potentiometers, four perspex panel to diffuse the LED light and to hide the electronics, two stand covers to conceal the sides and a top lid to finish the enclosure. After finalizing the design, I proceeded to 3D print all the required components for the assembly. These are the custom components I'll need to assemble the final unit. With all the 3D models printed, I began assembling the electronic components. I soldered wires to each potentiometers and the SPST switch, then mounted them on their designated stands. Each potentiometer was secured by tightening its screw with the wires routed through a small hole in the side of the stand. 
Similarly, the switch was pressed into its hole and its wire was fed through the corresponding wire channel. Next, I focused on the battery charging bit of the circuit. I saw that the battery to the B plus and B minus port of the TP4056 charging module. A blue wire was used to connect the out minus of the TP4056 to the V in minus of the buck converter. While the SPST switch was wired to control the connection between the out plus and the V in plus terminals. Once these connections were complete, I installed the power components into the base of the unit. The TP4056 module was secured by super gluing a stopper behind it after sliding it into its place. For the control system, I soldered all the necessary components for the Arduino on a perf board. While the setup may appear a bit messy, the final assembly will be fully enclosed. I then hot glued the two NeoPixel rings into their positions. The first one to the base and the second one to the top. After super gluing the second stand, I concealed the electronics by super gluing the side covers on it. Before installing the Perspex panels, I painted the body of the lantern with black acrylic color. After the paint dried, I inserted the Perspex panels and super glued the top into place to complete the build. So this is how my final setup looks like. This is a classic way to create an interactive project where you turn a knob to change the behavior of the light. The microcontroller reads the potentiometer position, converts it into a value, and then uses the value to change something about the NeoPixel, which could be brightness, color, or speed. This project encourages children to experiment with the primary colors to see what new shades they can create. Let me know what you think. Feel free to like, share, and comment if you have any suggestions for improvement. Thanks again for watching this video. I hope it helps you. If you want to support me, you can subscribe to my channel and watch my other videos. Thanks. See you again in my next video. Bye now.